this morning. Uh, brought us through the dangerous highways and brought us safe. And I know that he, he's, he's a good God. I know he's a good God because we're here today and we're obedient to his word. He told us to fill out to assemble ourselves and we're here. We're going to go ahead and open up our services this morning, morning worship, by singing, uh, we've come into this house, amen, amen. and uh, to be blessed. We have come into this house, gathered in his name to worship him. We
Jesus' name. 
Praise the Lord, new life. Praise the Lord. Put your hands together for Jesus. We are so blessed to be back in the house of the Lord once again to give his name the honor, the due, the honor that it is due. His Amen. name is Jesus. Amen. Omnipotent. Amen. Merciful. Protector. Amen. Friend. Healer. Amen. We can do anything but faith. Amen. 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 And we ought to give him the praise for all that he's done. Amen. We have to give him the praise because he wakes us up yes. and he gives us the ability to do. Amen. He's supposed to be trying to do his will. Amen. Amen. And that's to bring somebody to Christ and let them yes. know that there is a Savior yes. and his name is Jesus. Amen. Amen. He's amazing. We got to look up his name this morning Amen. and you are just focus everything. Amen. Yeah, yeah.
hands together for the choir, amen. 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 And he is. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is amazing. Amen. amen. If you woke you up this morning, amen. if you got clothes on your back, food on your table, and a roof on your, over your head, give God some praise in this place. Amen. Amen. That's all y'all got for God. That's all y'all got for you, Jesus. Who woke you up this morning? Who made a way out of your way for you? Amen. Give God some praise in this place. Amen. excited this morning, and I try to get up every morning excited. Amen. Remember Amen. what God has done for me. Amen. 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 See, the only time is good. The only time to look back is when you look back and see where God has brought you from Amen. and what He's doing in your life. Amen. 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 And I, I, I have a certificate up here before we get on the word. I have a certificate up here that was presented to me for me to read. Amen. And we know we know our brother Sam Waters has been battling cancer. Amen. Amen. And he's, he has a testimony that he can share with each and every one of us. Okay. Now, he received a certificate of merit and appreciation is hereby granted to Samuel Waters for outstanding performance and has completed the prescribed course of radiation therapy with the highest degree of courage, Amen. determination, and good nature. We appreciate the confidence placed in, in us and the opportunity to serve you. Rio Brand Cancer Specialist. Hey. You see, this brother came in here this morning with a little pep in his step and a little glide in his stride. Right, Amen. Hey, man. And I thank God. All right, now. I thank God that he got you through this, brother. Amen. You had a lot of people praying for you. And being through those type of treatments myself, I know God is good. Yeah. Yeah. I know God is good. Amen. You are still here because of God's grace, mercy, and love for you. God is good. Yes, he is. Amen. Amen. Because he is so good to us. And as I look back over my life, I know that God is good. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Now, I would like for you, no, hold on. I was determined if I was going to do it this Sunday, or I was going to wait till next Sunday. But we have a birthday, a birthday, I said birthday, y'all, a birthday on January 29th. Amen. And let me say, this woman has been special to me and my family. And I want to wish her a happy birthday today, and I'm going to wish her a happy birthday on her birthday, which is January 29th. Amen. Amen. And I'm talking about our very own evangelist, Dr. Diane Cole. And I ain't gonna tell you how old she is. If she wants you to know her age, she'll let you know herself. But all I can tell you is this. I have learned so much from this woman. Amen. Amen. This woman of God. Amen. Amen. You know, I can get on the soapbox and start talking about the tradition of men. How men thought it was only up to them to preach and teach the word of God. But my Bible says that God has no respect of person. Amen. Who we call is who he calls. Amen. And ain't none of our business who he calls. And you know that they're called and you know God has sent them by the way they bring and teach the word of God. And let me tell you, every time this woman picks up that word and start preaching and teaching it, I get a little pep in my step and glide in my stride. I thank God for my for me some Adventist Dr. Dottie Ford. Yes, yes. And I'm going to give you your flowers here. Amen, somebody. Amen. And tell you how good you have been to me and how God has used you as an instrument for me and my family. And I want to say a happy birthday. I love you. You know I love you more than anything. Amen. And if we get everybody to stand and wish Adventist Dr. Dottie Ford a happy birthday. Amen. And if Mother Aiden Mass, did you want to say something? God is good. Let me be seated. God is yes. good. I'm telling you the truth. So we'll just say I'm another year older. Amen. 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 Drop in the bucket. Amen. Drop in the bucket. Amen. 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 God bless you all. And thank you so much. Yes. Pastor. I love you. I love you all. all right. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you.
you break it down. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Because of him being so awesome, we as his children have a responsibility that goes beyond our circle of jobs, our families, and even our own lives. We have a responsibility to be found faithful in Jesus Christ. I was asked last week, last Sunday, a question. And that question was, how can I keep track of if I'm doing God's will? Or how can you know that you're walking and living in the God's will? Uh -huh. Well, I believe this teaching of the Apostle Paul will answer that question. Uh -huh. And at this point in the letter to the Romans, the Apostle Paul turns from Christian doctrine to the practice of Christian doctrine. Uh -huh. Say amen if you hear me. Uh -huh. You see, God, Paul has given us the word from Romans chapter 1 all the way up to 11. Amen, somebody. Now he's trying to tell us how to live, how to practice the doctrine that we've been taught. And from the description of what God has done for us in saving us by grace through faith to the question of what we should do for God. Clearly, we should not do the things we used to do. And we should not live as we have lived before. Because we are new creatures if you have come to faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. You don't do the same things that you used to do. You don't say the same things you used to say. Amen. And you don't live the way you used to live. Amen. Amen. And we should live as those who can discern the will of God for our lives. And know what is good, pleasing, and perfect in this Christian journey. Paul says in the text, I beseech you. I plead, request, petition, desire, pray, or encourage you. It is a word that was used in military circles that tells what happens when a military leader calls the soldier to action. Mm -hmm. that when you confess with your mouth mm -hmm. and knew in your heart, yes. that day you became involved in God's army. 
you became a soldier of Jesus Christ. So Paul was saying, I'm calling you to attention. I'm calling you to come together. I beseech you, I encourage you, I exhort you. I'm trying to get you to see the urgency here. I plead with you, I encu I'm encouraging you, I confront you, I challenge you, I beseech you. And after he says, I beseech you, there's a word therefore, which is a connecting word and is the key to the entire verse. Mm -hmm. We must recognize that the word therefore means I said that or this or for this cause before. And based on what I said to you earlier, I'm getting ready to say something else. Mm -hmm. And unless we know what the therefore is there for, we won't understand what he is saying following the therefore. Uh -huh. And the therefore Paul is referring to is found in, Re in Romans chapter 5 verse 1. Where it says, therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And that word justify is a legal term which means to, to be declared righteous. It means that we have been declared innocent or not guilty. Yes. We have been declared righteous and we have been declared blameless. Mm -hmm. It is a term that is used in the court of law. In other words, you did it, you got caught doing it, mm -hmm. you got caught committing a crime, and you've been hauled off the court to face the charges. Mm -hmm. And the verdict is in and you have been found not guilty. Mm -hmm. But the beauty of God's court of law is God is the judge yeah. and I try. Yeah. So when the judge, the father, sees the attorney, his son, mm -hmm. standing before you or before us, the defendant, he, who is saved through the son, he bangs his gravel mm -hmm. and says, I now declare you righteous. Mm -hmm. I now declare you blameless. Right. I now declare you not guilty. Mm -hmm. Not because of who you are, but because who is representing you, your attorney, my son. Right. And not because of what you have done, but because of what he has done for you. Mm -hmm. And therefore, we are justified by faith. Mm -hmm. And the second therefore is found in Romans chapter 8, verse 1. Mm -hmm. There is, therefore, mm -hmm. no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Yes. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Amen. In other words, although we are uncondemned, because the penalty for our sin was paid by Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. and due to the fact that Jesus paid the penalty, Amen. God will not lay that penalty of sin and punishment on us. Amen. And that is God's mercy not giving us what we deserve. Yes. Thank you, Lord. But before you start to shout, <laughs> look at this. The penalty of sin has already been paid. Mm -hmm. Therefore, you are no longer condemned. And since you are no longer condemned, you now have a responsibility to Jesus Christ who has declared you righteous mm -hmm. and declared you uncondemned. Mm -hmm. Which leads us to Paul saying, now based on all I said, based on the fact that we do, we do deserve damnation, based on the fact that Jesus stood in our place, based on the fact that we did stand before God guilty of sin, based on the fact that Jesus took the penalty for us when he died on the cross, right. based on the fact that God has not given us what we deserve, yeah. based on the fact we are no longer condemned but saved. No longer are we outside of God. Now we're in his family. Based on <clears throat> Excuse me, based on all those things. Uh -huh. Now I beseech you, therefore, brethren, mm -hmm. by the mercies of God, that you present your body, mm -hmm. yeah. bodies, a living sacrifice. Yeah. Yeah. Based on all that Jesus has done, we now have a responsibility. Mm -hmm. But before Paul tells us what our responsibility is in living our life for Christ, we must understand that when Paul uses the term brethren, he ain't talking about everybody. He does not use it in the same sense that every human being is, is brothers and sisters. But in a spiritual sense, Paul here is talking to the people who have come to faith in Jesus and have been saved. He's speaking to church folks, the body of Christ. 
that folks who have been saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Spirit, folks who come to church and sing in the choir, serve on the usher board, and who cheerfully gives. He's talking to the folks that are already saved, but he challenged them to do something they have not already done. You see, God is never interested in when you got saved. As he is when, with what have you done since you've been saved. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Have you told somebody about the goodness of Jesus? Yes. Yes. Have you put off the old self and you are now living in your new self? Mm -hmm. Have you shared your love toward your enemies as well as your brothers and sisters? Have you put Jesus in the forefront and before everything? All right. yeah. Yeah. You see, he's talking to folks that are all that are already saved, and he confronts them to do something they have not already done. He says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies. Mm -hmm. In other words, you've already given me something. Your faith, but you have not given me all that I want. He's talking about give yourself completely and totally surrendering yourself to Jesus. And he says, I'm based in all this on the mercies of God. He didn't have to do it, but he did do it. Now we got to understand the difference between grace and mercy. Grace is God's unmerited favor. Yeah. In other words, we, when God gives you what you don't deserve. Yeah. Yeah. Mercy, on the other hand, is when God doesn't give you what you do deserve. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. let me break it down. Mm -hmm. When the Father God mm -hmm. laid down the law and the child, us, broke the law because of sin, somebody had to clean up the mess we made. And the Father provided his son, Jesus, to clean up our mess. That's justice. Mm -hmm. The father saw the tears of repentance on the eyes of his children who were saved by faith and he didn't spank the child. That's mercy. Then the father took him or her out for a treat, ice cream, that's grace. Mm -hmm. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. God did not give us what we do deserve. Yes. Yes. But mercy is based on justification. Mercy is based on justification. So if you have come to faith in Jesus Christ, you are now justified. Yes, yes. In other words, God is saying, based on the fact that I'm not going to give you what you do deserve, mm -hmm. and because of your faith in my son Jesus Christ, I'm going to give you grace, and I'm going to withhold what you do deserve, and that's mercy. Yes. And based on the fact that you should present your bodies, and why your bodies? Mm -hmm. When was the last time you broke God's law with your body? Mm -hmm. When was the last time you disobeyed God without your body? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When he says for, to present to him your body, it means literally all that you are. Yeah. Mind, yeah. body, and soul. You see, your body is an instrument of sin, which, is, which includes your hands, your feet, and your mouth. Mm -hmm. So our first responsibility as Christians is to present our bodies as a living sacrifice. But the challenge is presenting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And let me say, you have not presented anything or yourself until you let go of yourself. Amen. In other words, mm -hmm. if you have not turned over your life to God, mm -hmm. you have not presented. The problem we have is we want to give some, but not all of ourselves. Amen. But until you let go of your life and turn it over to God, you have not presented. Mm -hmm. Until you, you place your mind, body, and soul, until you place your life, until you place your career, until you place your family and your children, yes. until you yes. place your future, until you place... You're all in the hands of God yes. and take your hands off of yes. it. You have not presented. Yes. Yes. And you have not committed your life to God. Right. <clears throat> you see, coming to church is not enough. Yes. It does not matter how big your Bible knowledge is. Yes. It does not matter how many ministries you are a part of. Yes. It does not matter what you do to please people. Uh -huh. It does not matter if you have people running around the church jumping over chairs and falling out mm -hmm. because of the sermon you preach. Mm -hmm. If you have not given God control over your life, mm -hmm. 
you have not presented. It doesn't matter if you grew up in the church or how long you've been a member of the church. If you're still calling the shots in your life, you have not presented yourself yes, to God. Yes, yes. It doesn't matter how much money you give, how beautiful your voice is when you sing, or how you move people when you're praying. If you're still calling the shots in your life, and you have not taken your hands off of your life, you have not presented. You have only presented when you have placed your mind, body, and soul in God's hand. And you take your hands off of it. Because God is calling the shots, God is making the decisions, and God is in control. It's like the scripture says, at thy word, I will. You see, you, you want to know how to live your life for God? Be obedient to God's word. And put yourself to death. See, we are not only responsible in presenting our bodies as living sacrifice, but holy as well. And holy means to set aside for God's use and God's use only. Because he is a holy God. We need to understand that our body belongs to God and it is sanctified or set apart and it is his property. And some of you may be saying, why well, do I have to set aside my life? Because Paul says, it is your reasonable service. Yes. And the word reasonable comes from the Greek word, which means logical by investigation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Paul is saying, I'm calling on you to present your body to the Lord, and that is your reasonable service. Mm -hmm. He says, I have investigated it, and it is logical. In other words, it just makes sense. Mm -hmm. If he created me, it makes sense that I serve him. If he has made a way out of no way for me, it's only logical that I submit and commit my life to him. If he has healed my body of sickness or cancer of any type, it's only logical I have investigated. I need to serve Jesus with my all in all. If he has put a roof over my head, as if he has made means for me to take care of my family, it's only logical I have investigated it and I should serve him 100%. And why does it make sense, Paul? Why is it so logical? <clears throat> Do you not know your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit right. who is in you whom you have received from God? You're not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your body. Amen. You see, as a child of God, we have something that the world don't have. And his name is Holy Spirit in us. And he's there to lead us. He's there to guide us. He's there to convict us when we do the wrong. And he's there to reveal scriptures to us when we don't understand. The Holy Spirit is there to show us the light at the end of the tunnel. We have something that the world didn't give to us and the world can't take away. You see, we belong to God. He made us and he knows all about us. He paid for us and his son died for us. And because of all the things he has done for us, present your body as a living sacrifice to be used by God because we belong to him. All that we have, all that we are, belongs to God. Another responsibility we have as Christians is found in verse 2, which tells us, be not conformed to this world. Yes. Uh -huh. Do not observe, do not follow, mm -hmm. do not accept anything in this world. <clears throat> do not conform, pattern, or fashion our mind or character to this world. Mm -hmm. The appearance of this world will have you to think that it is lasting, permanent, and unending. Mm -hmm. The deception is that the world will offer the very best of everything such as pleasure, enjoyment, happiness, fulfillment, satisfaction, and completeness. But do not believe everything you see or hear from the world. The appearance the world shows is nothing but a lie, a mask, a masquerade, and it is only temporary. Even the very spirit of this world is the seed of corruption, and Satan is the God of this world. We see selfishness, greed, hatred, 
bitterness, ungodliness, war, mm -hmm. deceitfulness, sickness, death, and pride. We see murder in the form of spirituality, psychologically, and mentally. When you hate another person or don't agree with that person uh, or what they're doing to the point that you look for ways to attack them and destroy their lives and character in any way, you are guilty of murder. That's right now. More people commit murder with their mouths than right. people do who actually physically kill a person. Anytime you're talking down on somebody or talking bad about somebody or gossiping about somebody or lying about somebody, you are committing murder. Right. Because you're trying to turn that person's character down. Right. And as Christians, we're not to be involved in none of those things. As Christians, our mouth should be used as weapons to, to tell somebody about Jesus yeah, yeah, and to fight out the, the rouse and, and whatever the Satan brings against us. Yeah. Our mouth should be used for God's purpose and God's purpose only. Yeah. Because we have been set apart to serve God and to do His will. And let me say, the tongue is a hard thing to tame. Because most people, and sadly, some in the church commit murder every day through gospel. Amen. But we need to not follow the fashions and lust of the world. Not follow the course of this world. Not follow the leaders of this world. Not follow the false securities of this world. Not follow out the deceitful riches of this world. Not follow the crowd of this world. And not follow the pleasures in this world. For the word says, but just as he who calls you is holy, so be holy in all that you do. For it is written, be holy because I am holy. So if we're in Jesus, if we're in, been adopted into God's family, we are to live our lives holy and not worldly. So we are to be a living sacrifice, living sacrifices, holy and acceptable to God. And not to be conformed to this world. Mm -hmm. That's how you live your life for God. Yeah. But we're also told to be transformed yeah. by the renewing of our minds. Uh -huh. We are to alter, convert, or change by the renewing of our minds. Yes. And how many of you can testify that you know you have been changed? Yeah. Yeah. How many of you can keep it real and declare before Jesus saved you, your minds were calm? Yes. Yes. Satan had blinded your eyes. Yes. You were full of vanity, useless, and empty. And your focus was on earthly matters and earthly things. Yes. Your body had become the, fornic the fornicators of the flesh and the fire. I'm just looking for some honest answers here. <laughs> but now you can say that you have been born again and you are a new a person. Mm -hmm. The things that used to upset you right, don't upset you okay. anymore. Yeah. You don't crave to be the center of attention, mm -hmm. but you make Jesus Christ the center yeah. of your attention. Yeah. Yeah. You're not caught up with what other people have, but what Jesus has blessed you with. Yeah. You're no longer living for self, but you live for Jesus. Yes, and if you can testify to those things, just know you have been changed yes, and you yes. have been transformed. Thank you. Thank you. And this is why we need to understand that Jesus is the only one mm -hmm. who can transform and change us. Yes. I don't care what potions you use. I don't care who you run to. If you're not running to Jesus, it ain't going to change you. And there are two basic kinds of changes. External and internal. Mm -hmm. And the external change is like seeing the leaves change during autumn. Mm -hmm. Seeing spring turn into summer or fall into winter. But when it comes to an eternal change, it is a different story. Mm -hmm. Because it has nothing to do with the outside. Amen. Internal change requires us to surrender our will. Amen. And how many of you know just because it appears on the outside that a person has it all together mm -hmm. does that mean that that person has it all together on the inside? Amen. Amen. You see, you can take a reprobate, mm -hmm. dress him or her up, yes. and they are still reprobate. You can put a fool, you can take a fool and put him in a Cadillac, yes. 
and he's still a fool. <laughs> you can take a sinner and put a suit on him, uh -huh. and he is still a sinner. Yes, sir. Y'all ain't hating here. Yes, sir. Let me put it this way. Uh -huh. You can come to church on Sunday morning, yeah. shouting amen, hallelujah, glory be to God, on, and looking religious, but when no one is looking, yeah. Yeah. when no one is looking, you are out there in the world being just like the world. You can come to church on Sunday morning praying, fellowshipping, and worshiping with the saints. But the moment you step out of the doors of the church or the place of worship, right, you can't wait to get on the phone and gossip about what right, sister, right. sister, sister so and so was wearing or did in the church. Just because someone look, do, or act a certain way on the outside, does not mean they are the same person on the inside. You see, an internal change requires transformation. And that transformation can only occur in surrendering your heart, mind, body, and soul to Jesus Christ. Amen. It is not external that matters. It is what's on the inside that matters. It is a matter of the heart, your total being. From within, out of man's heart, comes evil. Yeah. And whatever comes out of your mouth comes, on, comes out, and what you say comes from on the inside of you. Yes. So if you have bad feelings, if you have just evil thoughts, evil whatever, it will come out of your mouth. Yes, yes. But if you focus on the things of Jesus yes, Christ, yes, yes. if you set your affections on the things yes, above, yes. everything that comes out of your mouth will be glory be to God. Amen. Thank Jesus for yes. saving me. Thank Jesus that he's still working on me. Thank Jesus that he has not forgotten about me. Thank Jesus that he's made a way for me. And if you can't surrender your will, your mind can't be renewed. Made fresh or reestablished. So you can be transformed. You see, when you try to hold on just to certain things on your, in your life that you know is bad, you cannot be transformed. The question is, how do I how do I keep track of to know that I'm living in God's will? How do I know that I'm living my life for God? And the only answer to that is surrendering your life to God and put yourself to death. Until we put ourselves to death, we can never see Jesus. Because we're still holding on to the things we want to hold on to. And when we hold on to the things that is simple, things that is contrary to God, there's enmity between us and God. And Paul is saying to us, to be transformed, we have to renew our mind or change our way of thinking. When I went into the military service, they hope the whole function of, and Pastor Meredith can attest to this, the whole, uh, the whole reason in going to basic training is to get the world out of you and mm -hmm. put the military in you. Mm -hmm. And the purpose as a Christian who was born again to get rid of the old self, yeah. the only way to get rid of the old self is to be in God's word that transforms us, right. that changes us, right. that cleanses us, and that sanctifies us every day. Yeah. If you're not in the Word of God, you just plan. And I'm talking about you got to read, not only read the scriptures, you got to study the scriptures. Because if you ain't studying the scriptures, how can you real life be changed if you don't know what God is trying to tell you to do? Some people only pick up pick up the Bible when they come here on Sunday morning. But if you want to be changed, if you want to be transformed. If you want to live your life for God, get into his word. Yeah. And his word was made flesh, and his name is Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. You see, the battleground of our, our Christian life takes place in our mind. And in order for us to be transformed, it must include a large element of studying the word of God. Yeah. You see, some people are too much in love with a feeling or emotion. Some would rather feel warm and fuzzy mm -hmm. than see clearly and accurately. All right. Some prefer to hear moving stories than reading demanding texts. This is why I love Bible study and Sunday school. 
You see, the study of the Bible, God's holy word, renews the mind. Amen. How are we supposed to know how to walk in this Christian journey if we're not studying the word of God? Amen. Not reading, but studying. And there is a difference. You see, I can hear what you're saying to me, but am I taking in what you're saying to me? Am I meditating on it? Am I letting the Holy Spirit open my eyes to the scriptures? You see, we must replace the world's way of thinking with God's way of thinking. And the, the reason the world is in the condition that it is in is because of a lack of surrender to the will of God. And the one, let, me, let, me, let me tell you a little secret. The world will never get that. Because the world is controlled by Satan. And Satan has blinded the eyes of the world well, where they cannot see. But anybody who's listening in the, under the sound of my voice, if you confess with your mouth Jesus Christ and know that God raised him from the dead, Jesus will open your eyes. And let me say, Jesus encountered this feeling in the Garden of Gethsemane. As he prayed, sweats, his sweat was as drop of blood. He knew the cross laid before him, but he said, not my will, but thy, let thy will be done. You see, Jesus came here to do the Father's work. Jesus has saved us to do the Father's work. Amen, somebody. So when you present your body as a living sacrifice, you sacrifice yourself right on the altar, but you move from the altar and tell somebody about Jesus. You see, being a living sacrifice means you are dead to yourself, dead to your will, and dead to everything you want in life. You put Jesus first, amen, and he will direct God and lead you where you need to be. When you put God first in everything that you do, everything else will fall in place. You see, the sad thing about the flesh and our will, our will wants to do what the crowd does. <laughs> our will says it's okay to compromise the word of God to get them to come to church. All right. Our will says we want to get in where we fit in. Our will says it is not necessary to be part of a local church. Our will says my will and not the Lord's will. And if we ever are able to connect to God just like Jesus did in the garden, if we're able to get to the point where it is no longer about our will, if we're able to get to the point where it is not about my wife, husband, children, mother or father, will, but God's will, we will start to see a change in our life. When we surrender to the will of God, we will not only have willpower, we will also have I will not power. I will not want to lie. I will, I will not want to steal. I will not want to gossip. I will not want to use my tongue as a weapon. And this is only can happen with the renewing of your mind through the study of the word of God. It is the word that transforms a sinner into a saint. It is the word that destroys the old self and builds up and encourages the new self. It is the word that gives hope. It is the word that gives peace. It is the word that changes the inner man and woman into who God wants us to be. And his name is Jesus Christ. The word of God who was made flesh. So I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but ye, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And why should we do these things? Why should we do these things, my brothers and sisters? Because Jesus died for you and for me. And it's only logical. I've investigated it. I have looked into it. And it's only reasonable that we live our life with Jesus. And since he gave up so much for you and me, it's only logical that I give our, that we give ourselves totally to him. Amen. I have investigated. I have looked into it. I have checked it out. And since he gave up his life for you and me, 
Yeah. It's only logical that we give him our entire life. Mm -hmm. I have investigated. Uh -huh. I have looked into it. Uh -huh. I have yeah. checked it out. Yeah. And since he gave you and me the free gift of salvation, uh -huh. it's only reasonable that we be totally committed in serving him. Uh -huh. When you present yourself as a living sacrifice, uh -huh. when you do not conform to this world, uh -huh. when you allow Jesus yeah. to transform you, uh -huh. when you allow Jesus to renew you, Right. To make fresh, to reestablish your mind through his word, he gives you something to sing about. Yeah, right he gives you something to shout about. Right he gives you something to dance about. Yeah. He has given us all the reason to give him all the honor, yeah. all the praises, yeah. and all the glory. Yeah. If you know you are not who you used to be, yeah. if you know, if you know that you don't do the things you used to do, yeah. if you don't fall the way you used to fall, yeah. you don't hang out who you used to hang out with. If you've been changed, give God some praise. You. you see, if you know he has been good to you, if you know he has been there to pick you up when you have fallen, if you know he has been there to give you peace, if you know he has been there to calm your soul, give him some praise. If he's been there to heal your body of sickness, if he's been there to give you make a way out of nowhere, if he's been there to calm your storm, to give you peace over troubled waters, to heal your Do you know what he's done for you? Yeah. Yeah. You see, can't nobody do you like can't Jesus. Nobody. Can't nobody. When you have the love of God, mm -hmm. oh, somebody. Hallelujah. when God is in your life, yes, Lord. man, it just brings such peace in your life. Mm -hmm. My brother Waters went through his struggle with cancer. Mm -hmm. My evangelist, Dr. Dottie Ford, is still struggling with arthritis. Yes, Pastor Emeritus Ford is struggling with arthritis. My sister Cece struggling with arthritis. Yes, Lord. But where are they at right now? Yes, Lord. So if you're worshiping, praising God. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Because it's the word of God that brings comfort. Yeah. It's the word of God that brings yeah. peace. Yeah. It's the word of God that gives you yeah. strength. Yeah. It's the word of God that makes you say, I'm going to serve him. Yeah. I'm going to serve him. Yeah. I know what he's done for me. Yeah. I know what he's doing in me, yeah. and I know where he's taking me. Yeah. And see, that's why I can keep running my race. Yeah. That's why I can keep the good fight of faith. Yeah. Because I know where I'm going yeah. when I leave here. Yeah. Come on, somebody. That ought to make you want to shout. Because where we're going, there's no more crime. Yeah. There's no more sickness. Yeah. There's no more diseases. Yeah. There's no more people coming against you. There's no more backbiting. Yeah. No more So the question was, Thank you, Jesus. how can you know you're walking or living in God's will? Mm -hmm. Well, you know by putting your old self to death mm -hmm. and living your new life for Jesus. Amen. My brothers and sisters, what God wants and what God deserves. Yes, Lord. Come on, somebody. He created each and every one of us. Amen. What he deserved is our all, yes, our mind, body, and soul. Yes, he wants our heart and our living. Yes. He wants us to love him and he wants us to serve him. Yes. He wants us to give him all the praises. He wants us to give him our obedience. Yes. When you're living your life for God, mm -hmm. you're not practicing sin. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. You're being obedient to his word. Amen. If he says love your enemies, you're loving your enemies. Yeah. If he says fornication is a sin, you don't fornicate. And if he says, if he tells you that if somebody needs something, not only did you give it to them, but you give them the clothes off your back if you have to. God's word is, is our ABCs and our one, two, three. If you want to know how to live your life for God, get into his word. He left his word to show us how to live this life. So if you want to know how you live it in God's will, Amen. start living for God. Amen. 
start living for God. Stop making every convenience a convenience for you. Right. That's contrary to God. Right. Stop using people. Stop, stop lying on people. All stop right. stealing. Stop doing all of these things. All right. And like I said, stop wearing your emotions on your sleeves yes. when somebody's trying to correct you. Yes. As Christians, we need to put on the full armor of God. Come on. That's how we make it through. That's how we focusing on reaching that goal. We're surrounded by a great cloud of witness. People have went before us who has done it. That is our inspiration to move forward in the things of God. If you want to live your life of God, put self to death and put on your new life and be obedient to God's Amen. will. Stop compromising the world, the word to fit your life. All right. God didn't give us this part of his word. He gave us all his word. All right. all right. And if we're going to live for him, we got to be obedient to his word. Amen. And we got to be willing to bow down at his altar mm -hmm. and to work in his vineyard. Amen. In other words, he wants us to sacrifice our life for him. Amen. Paul's message is very clear. Cool. We need to put to practice what we confess. Amen. If you say you're part of God's family, you're in his family, live your life as such. Amen. If Jesus is our Lord and Savior who saved us, who saved us from eternal damnation, let us honor him by living for him. We need to ask ourselves, are we living our lives? as living sacrifices for God. Not being conformed to this world, but being transformed and renewed by his word. Are we living our lives for Jesus? And if you are not, then there is no better time than now. We're abundant grace, and this grace is going to end one day. And when I say one day, the church is going to be raptured one day. Amen. And if you want to come to know him as your Lord and Savior, the Bible says in Romans 10 and 9 to confess with your mouth Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and know in your heart that God has raised him from the dead you too shall be saved. Yeah. I don't care about what you have done in the past I don't care what great sin you have committed. All you have to do is repent of your sin and come to faith in Jesus Christ. Yeah. There's no sin so great that God will not right forgive you for all you have to do is call on his name. Call on the name of Jesus. And he will save you. Any burdens that you may be holding on to, give them to God. Jesus said, I am your burden bearer. Everything we go through in life, all we have to do is give it to Jesus. Amen, somebody. Yes, Lord. Man, that's the God we serve. Yes, Lord. We don't have to go. He wants us to live peaceful lives while we're here. And that's why he wants to take everything away from us. Amen. Place all your cares and concerns on him. Yeah. And he will see you through. Yes, the doors of the church are open. <laughs> and as the choir comes forth. Amen. As the choir comes forth. Mm -hmm. As the choir comes forth. Mm -hmm. Just know whatever you need in Jesus Christ. Whatever you need in Jesus Christ. Just come. If the Lord has spoken to your hearts today, please come. If you don't know him as Lord and Savior, please come. If you want to be a part of the ministry here at New Life, please come. Just know whatever your needs are, that's right. Can be found right here at the altar. All right. <laughs>
Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes.